So, hello, welcome to Espace Tricot's Clin d'Oeil series. I'm Lisa. And I'm Melissa. And this is a series that we've decided to start where we can do shorter uh, little episodes where we choose a particular topic or a technique or a product to focus mm-hmm, on. Mm-hmm. You know, for example, I think we have some ideas to maybe do a, uh, a focus on interchangeable needle sets, a focus on blankets, a focus on um, lace projects, and that's what we've decided to do today. We're going to focus on mm-hmm. summer samples that are perfect for uh, lace weight yarns for the for the warmer months. Mm-hmm. So so we have quite a collection to show yes. you here today mm-hmm. and, a, and a nice variety of lace weight yarns. Lise, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Because what we, what we realize is that sometimes we think summer we need to knit with cottons or linens, yeah. but you can still knit, knit with some merinos and alpacas yeah. and wools, but when they're in a lace weight yarn and they're li- knit very loose and airy, then they're very easy to wear in the summer. And then you can transition them into the colder months where you would wear them more as an indoor scarf yeah. or indoor yeah. shawl. So, you know, we talked, um, We've talked a lot about linen in the past, so we, we have all of our linen samples, but this is really to show you how you can use lace weight uh, mm-hmm. to do projects in the summer. So we wanted to, what we wanted to do was profile, go through some different yarns and projects, uh, and then also show you some other lace weight uh, yarns that are possible, which yeah, we don't necessarily really have projects any, for. Any projects that we show today, lace weight is really interchangeable, mm-hmm, right? Completely. So, you know, if you prefer to work with a lace weight yarn that has more of a linen base in the summer, that's mm-hmm. great, but, you know, you can just as easily substitute to merino lace weight yes so right. so it's really about the weight and the sample the pattern if it calls for lace weight yarn it's really any lace weight mm-hmm. yarn mm-hmm. and and the uh, and the fiber and the colors and that kind of thing are, are entirely up to you right so it depends on the texture you're looking the for texture, the feel the, the drape feel. yeah Some and the season you mm-hmm. know so if you want yes of course you can transition your summer samples into into winter and mm-hmm. and and the colder months but i think you know the lino which is mm-hmm. is a one very of much a, a, one of our favorites for the summer it has a lot of linen in it and you know we tend to pick the lighter mm-hmm. colors and and uh and sort of springier summer more summery feeling colors to knit with uh with that one mm-hmm. although you've done your your red one which i I think is perfectly transitional. Yes, right. Yes, you're right. Uh, but you know, m- perhaps you wouldn't choose a white or a yellow for for, for your winter, winter project. Right, exactly. Right. So the Lino, okay, we'll start with the Lino. So okay, the okay. So we've talked about the groovy <laughs> pattern Lots before. Of times. <laughs> yes, because we've knit this one several several times in several different. Um, Yarns. Yarns and several different weights of yarn as well, actually. And so this, this is, is actually, actually the lace weight version. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. there's two versions, the DK yeah, and the lace weight. Yeah, there's a DK and the lace weight version. And this was actually knit by, it's, it's uh, knit for, uh, well, it's not even knit for us, actually. It's knit. <laughs> we stole it. <laughs> we, we stole it. It's one of our, uh, one of our consultants who works here, Stephanie. She, uh, she knit this for herself and it was just so beautiful. We asked her to bring it in and. And, and to loan it to us for us <laughs> to show on the podcast. But look at this is in the bolt color way, which is a it's such a daring color. It's, it is. A, yeah. Okay. So Lino is a combination of linen. Is and it silk? It's and linen and silk. Just linen. It's and just linen yeah. and silk, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so it's it by has Handmaiden. A, it's by Handmaiden mm-hmm. Fine Yarns, which is a Canadian company out in Halifax. And they, um, it's a beautiful... I, how how would you describe the feel of this yarn? It's, it, it's sort of it's incredibly soft, but a structure, bit, but has structure, but a little bit a of a little bit crunchy, little, at the same a little time. bit crunchy, and I, that's one of the things that I've talked about in the past. Is I like I like soft, but I like a little bit of crunch. Uh, yeah. So it has it has a bit more hold, you would say. Yeah, yeah. It, it isn't so like like sticking to you. It it holds itself a little bit more. So yeah, and so that pattern did I mention is by Jumper Cables Knitting, and it's uh it's just a series of of stockinette and reverse stockinette sections, which maybe don't show up so well in this particular pattern because of the variegation, but a beautiful lightweight. Mm-hmm sample or project for the summer mm-hmm. okay so at least what have you knit so i knit something know? that is um it's a pattern that i had done previously that i redid it's called wrapped in lino mm-hmm. and uh, so it's an espace tricot pattern and it is gigantic <laughs> it, <laughs> it is, is huge it is huge i mean the dimensions are i, I can't even remember but you can wrap that's why we called it wrapped in lino because you could wrap yourself this is so half many of it times. <laughs> This is folded so, half. <laughs> so this is, it's a rectangle, but it's actually a parallelogram, I should yeah. say. Yeah. So let me just find the end here. So basically you cast on and you do short rows and then you go for a long, 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 long time. Should I, un- should I un- Actually, uh, we should go the other side. Yeah, because this is the wrong yes. side. 
and then you just go for quite a long time and you just keep going and going and going and going and then you end with again another short row at the bottom so and your your it's a parallelogram so your tips what I like about the, the fact that you have these tips is it's easier to tie around yeah. tie around your neck. And this takes two skeins of the lino, and the lino is actually, it comes in very generous uh, yardage. It's yes, 800 meters 800 per meters. skein. So this is a 1600, mm. this is a kilometer and a half, yes. at least a knit. Yes, so you can always <laughs> cut it short, but what I wanted yeah. this for is that it's wide and it's long. So it's really, you're wrapped you in really, lino. You really, you are wrapped it's in lino. It's a big wrap that uh, keeps you nice and uh, cozy on a yeah. kind and of a Yeah, because it's so fine, you can just sort of collapse it down as yes. a scarf too, right? Yes. And so if you if you want to have a look at different ways to wear this and mm -hmm. wrap it, it's on our Ravelry project page. So. so it's great, you know, when you have those cool uh, summer evenings and you just want to wrap yourself mm -hmm. around, but you don't want a heat of a wool. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's fantastic. So Very elegant. Yes. So that's our wrapped in lino. Okay. Yeah. So another yarn, another lace weight yarn that we have in store. We've had this in store for quite a long mm -hmm. time, right? And it's from Sweet Georgia, another one of our favorite hand dyers. And uh, so she also Canadian. Sweet Georgia Yarns is in Vancouver in BC and this one is the uh, merino silk lace and it's a combination as the name states mm -hmm. <laughs> of merino and silk and this is the alpaca baby shawl by Marie, S Mar Marie Grace Smith and I can't peel. okay it's a big square so this one actually starts here you're gonna cast on in the center with your with your double pointed needles and you're just gonna be knitting in a circular way all the way around your scarf increasing at your four points at your four corners and it's a nice <laughs> we're holding everyone <laughs> talking from behind this shawl sorry it's a it's a nice repetitive pattern because there's no uh there's no purling in this is there at least because well there, there's, it, there's this row here the, yeah you've just got the the stockinette sections broken up with some purl rows can see and then the stockinette sections inter interspersed with the lace it's a very simple mm -hmm. lace and uh, it was just actually a beautiful, it's a beautiful weight, even yes. double, because it's the kind of thing that you're going to, you're going to put on and you are going to sort of fold in half and to wear a and to wrap yourself. Yeah. Because I believe the original pattern was a baby blanket because it's called alpaca baby shawl. Yeah. So it's, but then we love the idea of having a square shawl. Yes. So we thought it would be good to knit yeah, it up uh, in, a in a lace, lace weight, weight yarn. Because exactly. when you double the square, it gets quite heavy. So yeah. doing it in a lace weight gives it that lightness. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, uh, moving on with the, the Sweet Georgia as well. So we have the Sweet Georgia, uh, we can show you right here. This is the Merino Silk Lace. Um, we also have the Sweet Georgia Cashel, looks fine. Here it is. No, I no, said that last <laughs> time, I made that mistake. So it's the Cash, cash silk, silk Lace. So this is a cashmere silk yarn. Mm -hmm. And um, the pattern that we did in that one is called the Kozu. So this one has um, a little bit of a, well, it's cashmere. So it has a bit more mm -hmm. of a wooly feeli feeling it than the merino just, it silk. It has a little cashmere halo. I yes. don't know if you a can little, pick little. that up. Look at the color, how beautiful it looks. So what's like. really interesting, the kozu, it's, it's, a tri it's a rectangle. So you have this very interesting uh, drop stitch here where there's a whole bunch of little twists that happen around your needle when you do this stitch. So you have two on this side. And then if we move over, mm -hmm. you have uh, three on that side. And this is by Kirsten Johnstone, this pattern. So this is really nice. And what's nice is the stitch, it gives you a little bit of variety from the stockinette. <laughs> and then <laughs> a, a tiny little bit a little in bit. between a huge stockinette section. But really, it's such a, uh, you know, if it's one of those, if you like the process, yes. if you need a relaxing knit, this yes. is just, I mean, to, to work with this yarn in oh, your hands, right? Oh, it's amazing. Right? It's amazing. And you only need to focus for five little for sections. For five little <laughs> sections, exactly. <laughs> and this section is actually, I think it's just a couple of rows, but it looks more because you, you twist and, yeah. and drop. So it's not that many rows. Yeah. And it's a perfect it's a perfect thing to wear in the summer, but it's also a perfect thing to knit in it the It is. Summer, right? It's very and you know, so who, who doesn't like a little bit of cashmere? Exactly. You know? But as we mentioned, any project can be done with any of the lace yarns. Yeah. So that's that one. Okay, so Prairie by Madeline Tosh. So Melissa even manages to get a little bit of uh, a bit of halo in the summer. <laughs> exactly. So this is, uh, I, mean, I just chose some nice bright colors. Oh my God, those are I so know. fun, Melissa. They fun. They're, they're a little bit electric. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is, um, it's a, it's a, it's a Madeline Tosh yarn. It is 100% merino and it is, it's a single ply as well. So I would say it's basically a lace weight version of the Tosh mm -hmm. Merino Light and it's, it's one of my favorites to work with actually and it's also um, 
768 meters. So it is. Well, that's a another lot thing we should mention. Like m most of the la lace weight yarns are 100 grams, a lot of meterage. A lot We're of talking meterage. like seven to 800 meters. Yeah. So one skein can give you quite a nice project. Of course. So you know yeah. it's also an economical way yeah, of knitting, knit. right? Exactly. You, it takes you a lot longer. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't cost as much, and you can you can go. You can have a bigger project. So exactly. that's the nice thing about lace. So this is called the Traverso Due, and as Lisa mentioned, it does include a halo. And so what I did was I took a strand of the Madeline Tosh Prairie, and I paired it with, this one was actually paired with uh, Rowan. Oh, which is discontinued, the Kid I Silk think. Haze. Uh, well, the Kid Silk Haze stripe mm -hmm. is discontinued, but of course, Kid Silk Haze is, is still available, and you can use any, 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 any sort of I mean, you uh, could also do it with, without the mohair, right? You Melis? can absolutely do it with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, the mohair adds a little bit of a, uh, if you're going to do it without the mohair, then I would probably do it in a fingering weight yarn. Okay. Yeah. Have a go up. But this pattern is called Traverso Duo, Due by... Ooh, I forget her name. Oh, Regina Mosmer. Yeah. And so it's again, it's 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 a long parallelogram. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it increases from the corner and it just goes over. And it's a great, it's a it's a it's a wrap. It's a, it's an elegant wrap. You can just have over your shoulders or you can wear it as a scarf as you're transitioning. And I have to say, I'm months. just picturing myself in the summer with a little sundress and in yeah. the evening putting this on. It? It'd give a nice cozy it feeling. It is a nice cozy feeling, but it's yes. very light. It, yeah. it just weighs nothing. So, so that's what's is, nice. I mean, pairing, so pairing, um, uh, a mohair with a lace weight, yeah. it still keeps it light. Super Whereas if you light. pair it with a fingering or a DK, right. it's a little, a little heavier. heavier. So that's yeah. what could keep it a bit more for a cool summer night. Yeah. So that one was, that one, and that's a nice relaxing knit as well. Okay. I'm, I, as we're going through these projects, I see that we have a lot of stamina for stockinette. We and, do, we uh, do. <laughs> <laughs> because we like that we like simple and elegant. Yeah. But then it's like, oh my goodness, but how, it is a lot. And we how knit, did we do those? And we knit most. We actually yeah, knit we all, did of all these, of these, you samples. know. So th that was before, though. That things, was before. <laughs> I don't know. know how things that have much. changed. Yeah, um, so right. this is the Kigali Knights. So this was my original inspiration for the uh, wrapped in uh, wrapped Lino. in Lino. So this one, it's the, basically the same idea. It's a parallelogram. But here what I did was, I don't know if you could really tell, maybe we could go a little closer, Melissa. Mm -hmm. um, so one side is reverse stock in it and one side is stock in it. And to be honest, I did that because I was getting a little bored. <laughs> so I said, oh, I'm just going to switch it up even though it's the exact same stitch. Um, that it, is hilarious. It, I know, but it made me, that's the nice thing when you design simple things. You yeah. can just switch as you go along. And what the nice thing is when you, when you switch, then you sort of can, you can see like, oh, it looks like I'm making oh, progress. Yeah. You know? it's, it's kind of like a built-in progress marker right So there. this one is, is one one skein of Merletto. So my idea yeah. for this was and to that's be a one Julia skein. Yeah. 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 Julia Slain, uh, yarn. And what I, um, uh, my idea for the parallelogram is this is more of a, you can wrap it on your shoulders yeah. with a little pin, but it doesn't quite wrap. Yeah. So what I wanted this for was um, to make it a little scarf with the points and mm -hmm. then I could tie it. Yeah. And uh, just a little history, the reason it's called Kigali Nights is because I was going to Rwanda and the capital is Kigali. So I was making this because I wanted a lightweight scarf for the evenings there. So that was the inspiration. And I just wanted to show you the tag. So this is Julie Asselin. And then this is uh, this is the exact color that I used, Coraline. Mm -hmm. So this is a really beautiful lace weight, and it's a merino, cashmere, and silk. So you have quite a nice blend there um, for that one. Okay, so another lace weight yarn that we have in store is called uh, Sima, and it's by Shibui. And this is 100% merino. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's it's alpaca and merino actually. And these are just the two colors that we happen to use for this sample. As we see, we continue with our green yeah, theme. Yeah, our green and and cream. So this is called Spring Kerchief, and it's by Sish Sashiko Umura. And this is actually, so you can see the ombre effect. And what this is, is um, Sema Double Stranded. So it has a little bit mm, of, of a, a, more of a half, like a, more it's of it's a, a fingering weight, weight, weight say, yeah. Right? And so it really is a spring kerchief, I mm -hmm. would say, right? So it's transitioning you into the warmer months. It has a nice light feel. Uh, it does have some alpaca in there, so it's a little cozier. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I can't remember how many skeins we use. It's two of the uh, it's two of the green and two of the white. The apple Actually, and the ivory. Yeah, apple and well, ivory. Well, what was I think what really caught us our eye was the color. Yeah, because it's, it's so, so springy it's and then springy and graphic. The I ivory and the green. Sometimes we were a little bit hesitant when we put two different colors together for the marled look, but we just but found this was pretty. just so, so elegant. Very very pretty. Right. So this is just a very simple triangle shawl, obviously, with a, a center spine, top-down mm -hmm. knit. And so you're just knitting with two strands of the green, switching one out, 
Mm. And and putting in the natural and and stranding with the green and then ending with two strands of the natural. Right. So it's and, nice. And sometimes people hesitate when they have to double strands. So this mm -hmm. is a good project because yeah, it's a simple triangle. For the first but time. then it helps you, um, you know, I incorporate the technique of using two strands at the same time. Exactly, so that's I think good. That's a good one. Um, so here's another one that we. This is another one of my favorite yarns. It's called Jade Sapphire Silk, and this is a pattern that I created called the Eze. Again, another stuck in that rectangle yeah. with a little bit of detail. To, yeah, just to, to stop break the it up every once in a while. So, uh, so I have a little, um, uh, uh, um, I guess, eyelet edge, mm -hmm. and then it's just uh, a plain uh, rectangle. So my actual, my my sections are not even actually all the same width. Because? Because I have no idea. I was, I was knitting. What do you mean, I the same number of rows? Yeah, there's a oh. couple of little things. But you know what it made me realize? It doesn't really it matter. Really doesn't it matter. really, doesn't, it matter. really matter. doesn't matter. So afterwards, I thought I was doing the right and I was counting. And then after, I'm like, oh, there's like four more rows in this section, <laughs> six more rows in that section. <laughs> is that true? It is totally true. And, That's and, hilarious. But it's amazing because it just shows us that, okay, it's not really the it's end of the really world, you know? Not. So it's this really this is... Um, this is uh, a now really that you've told me that, Lisa, I'll never look at this the same way. <laughs> it's trash. It's perfection. It's perfection. So, um, so this one is done with the jade sapphire soap. We don't have too many colors uh, left in stock, and yeah. it's interesting because this is one of these yarns where people, when they look at it or touch it, yeah, they're not they're not inspired. No, right? they're not inspired um, because they feel it. They're like, oh, this is a bit weird texture. But when yeah. you when you knit it and block it, it's just again, it's sort of like the lino except this is cashmere so you have yeah. the lino is is a, a linen, linen and, and silk this is linen and this cashmere. is a linen and cashmere so you still have this this like bit of a halo softness yeah but then there's this structure behind it which just yeah. i can't i can't get enough of although sense. even even it's interesting because it feels stringy it does feel, yeah i think that's why people aren't inspired because it does feel stringy it doesn't feel crunchy like the lino no, does no you're it right it feels a little stringy in the skein but but don't be deterred by that because it it just it knits up incredibly soft it is and and it, it has a beautiful drape mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel remotely stringy so yeah. it's really it's about the fabric that it creates yes. rather than how it feels in the skein so. and if any of you've seen some previous podcasts we talked about the attacka which was mm -hmm. also done in the self so that right. was the another project that we had yeah. done in that so this is a spastico pattern called mm -hmm. Eze, and our patterns are available in English and in yeah. French uh, through our uh, web store, our website. Oh. Okay, so this funny little, sweet little mm -hmm. shawl, it's a little triangle, and it is, is it a Kirsten Johnstone as well? I, I, yes, it is. It okay, is. so this is, um, I don't know if we've talked about our Habu yarns on previous podcast lease, but Habu makes, oh, yeah. Habu Textiles makes incredible yes, yarns. Johnson. Okay, so um, one of them, oh, this one doesn't have a label. You want to pull that one out? So this is a combination of silk and stainless steel. And this one is 100% merino. And these are both lace weight yarns. And so... What the Hakusa shawl is, is actually a combination of the silk stainless steel, which is, is used right here to cast on. So you cast on on this, this long section and you work just with the silk stainless steel. And then, um, and then when you get here, you just add a strand in of the merino. And you just create this beautiful, it's so light I and know, airy. I, we knit this several years ago, yeah. but it's just it's very popular. You want to pull that corner down, mm -hmm. the little thing down? Little and what's corner. nice is that you have this oddness, because you're just knitting with the stainless down here, you have some stretched out stitches, yeah. some together stitches, but that's that whole look. It's sort of a deconstructed, yeah, you know, reverse sort of, seaming kind of look. And it kind of holds its shape as yeah. you as you tie it. And so it's just, a, and this is really, truly more of a kerchief. It's very, mm -hmm. it's very tiny and this is the larger um, size i believe there were two sizes yeah, were i think this oh, is really? the larger so, one really yes. imagine how small yeah, the small would be one tiny. would be mm -hmm. although i knit this one so it could be that i you were a little bit tighter uh, yeah because i tend to be a, a tighter knitter and i did knit this shortly after we opened i think <laughs> right after we got so, the habu so. so here we talk about the a little bit of stru uh, structure as well melissa yeah. right just like yeah we're talking so about that silk samples. stainless steel does give you know that's the thing about the stainless steel it gives it this this memory mm -hmm. so as you crunch it it you know it, it sort of holds its shape however you you manipulate it so 
And this is that's another thing that sometimes people, they look at the habu yarns and they're like, oh, they're, they're confused, so fine. Right? They're, they're confused. so fine. But you use a big needle. Like it's, I yeah. don't know, maybe a four millimeter needle. Yeah. And a big needle. I mean, <laughs> I know that's small for some people, but it's not like you're using tiny, tiny right. needles, right? Like, exactly. Like a two or two and a half. Yeah. And so you can do something where you can choose two colors that are quite similar. Yeah. So there's less contrast. Or as Melissa did in this one, you have yeah. the green and the white, which gives a little bit more contrast. Mm -hmm. Or even here, the gray. So it's a bit of a darker yeah, or a lighter. Yeah, like that as well. So it's interesting. Yeah. You can really go for the different uh, different looks that you're looking yeah. for in the habu. And so habu is one of those yarns. They're fantastic for summer mm -hmm. summer patterns. We also have our double take tea. Yeah. We have um, uh, Age of Brass and Steam. Mm -hmm. We have lots of samples and other habu yarns. What I like about the habu is much like uh, the shibui yarns in the sense that it's it's a lot about experimentation mm -hmm. and and putting together different strands and different textures yes. and yes. sort of you know seeing what kind of fabric you get when mm -hmm. you put together, for example, the silk mm -hmm. stainless steel and the and the merino or in the shibui is mm -hmm. the, the the silk cloud right. and, the, and the and the linen even yeah. you know. And we have a lot of artists or fiber artists who mm -hmm. come and buy the habu yeah. because they just find it's very interesting yeah. and they can really play with yeah. that. So mm -hmm. we we also have some other lace yarns where we don't actually have uh, samples knit up in them but we just mm -hmm. wanted to show them um, quickly so we have drops lace and drops lace is an alpaca is it an alpaca silk now that I I'm think it's yes a, it's yeah. alpaca and silk so this is a nice uh, lace weight yarn that's been very popular we have the we did have a sample in the Manos oh, Marina in exactly this color it was and beautiful it was, and it unfortunately was, so was stolen and it was long and Amelia knit that for us so yeah. the, the Manos Marino is a lovely lace weight and let me just it's a 100% merino. So it's mm -hmm. sort of like the Fino. It's a lot like the Fino. But it's a, a lot like the Madeline Tosh Prairie. Yes. So yeah. th they could be interchangeable yeah, on a project absolutely. as well. Then we have Malabrigo and the Malabrigo lace. What's interesting is a 50 gram. So most mm -hmm. lace weights we have come in a hundred. So this is nice if you want to play with different colors or you want something small. Yeah. Or if you need half a skein, you know, like, yes. uh, you know, 400 meters more, but you don't need 800 meters right. more. So you so buy three skeins of that, that, you know, instead of two full skeins of right. the 800 meter. Yeah, that's lace a good, yarn. and we also have the, the, um, oh, uh, yes. the um, cloud. The Anzula silk cloud, which is another, it's, uh, I had another skein, I thought, because I wanted to show, oh, I always have fun mm -hmm. picking the <laughs> color combinations. So the Anzula silk cloud is basically a, uh, a lighter weight version of the Anzula squishy, mm -hmm. which is a combination which is what of, I'm wearing. Yeah. Yeah, this is the is Anzula that, yeah. Squishy. All which, of it? Yeah, uh, except this color. Okay. This so the color is from Georgia, the... but every, there are five colors and yeah. four of them are squishy. Okay. So this uh, this is like, do some but people this consider is, but this not, a... But not this yarn. No, it's and so that's the thicker Yeah, one. so this is the uh, Silk Cloud, and this is... No, it's uh, uh, <laughs> Anzula Cloud. Anzula Cloud. <laughs> She's got fuzz and on her brain. Exactly, and this is a combination of Merino, uh, Cashmere, and a not, little bit of nylon. A little bit of nylon. And it's it's a some people call it a light fingering, a heavy mm -hmm. lace weight, but uh, we fell in love with it when we were at TNNA and we saw the beautiful samples. And again, oh, yeah. nice big wraps, like mm -hmm. something like the wrapped in lino would be great in this. Yeah, gives a completely different texture because it has wool, mm -hmm. but it's very light and airy. Yeah. So that's a um, that's a nice. So one. that's a nice one. Mm -hmm. we have we looked at all of our. And samples? there were two more samples. There was the windward Melissa oh, okay, and the, the Emily windward. that we wanted to talk. And about. the what? The oh, Emily. and the Emily. Okay. Is, I'm going to go get the Emily while you're okay. talking about that. Okay, so I'm going to show you a, a fingering weight version of this sample first because this is a pattern by Heidi Kiermeyer. It's called the Windward, and I knit it up first in the Madeline Tosh Merino. Light. It's a very interesting construction, it's isn't so it? It's so interesting. So you start at one end and you just ingeniously keep changing <laughs> directions, the direction of knitting, and also from stockinette to reverse stockinette to garter. And so, I mean, I, I don't know how Heidi came up with this. I know. I really don't. It's like, how? How did she do and that? And her pattern is so well written yeah, that you can you first don't think you're going to understand, but and the way she has it written. just do what she says. Just do you, what she you says. You don't try to understand it. You just do exactly yes, what she says. Exactly. So this is a version of that same exact scarf, but knit with a lace weight yarn. This is knit with Freya. Uh, Fre it was a Freya a, ombre um, lace. Ombre lace. So it's mm -hmm. merino. Mm -hmm. with, and, uh, and so this just shows you with a color changing yarn. That you can get you can get a little sense of how all those directions change again and this was uh this is and it's smaller as you could see so yeah. the pattern was identical we followed the exact same pattern yeah it's just that with the thinner yarn it ended up being a bit of a smaller scarf so this exactly. is more of a scarf yeah than, uh, i would that just you wrap, wrap around, around yeah and more of a an accent uh, yes. and de decorative to piece. make you feel like you're a parisian, uh, <laughs> yes, <exactly. laughs> a parisian uh, lady 
And then the other one, the last sample we wanted to show is called the Emily. So the Emily starts at the tip. So this is a different construction. So it mm -hmm. starts at the tip and it increases, increases, and then you cast off. So you cast off uh, um, on that on long that, edge. I can't, I can't, every time I'm here, I, <laughs> you know what, I think I, let me see. Or is this the cast off? <laughs> I always forget. I have to hold it up properly. So the point, I think, I think, Melissa, we start at this. Oh, no, you start here. This is the wrong side, this though, is, no? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right here. <laughs> like this. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So this is, you start off in this little, this little. Okay, that tip, point. Yes, okay. and then you go, because that's the direction of the lace, okay. and then you cast off. Along on this, this edge, edge. exactly, okay. and that's how we had it. By the way, you yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I just forgot it. So this is, um, uh, I really, I really love this pattern. So this, yeah. we, I knit this before I had, we had the store, mm -hmm. and uh, what I liked about it was that I just really like this pattern. I'm not a too too much of a flowery person, but it reminded me of a bit of a leaf. Yeah, it's so very much, it's uh, yeah, a very just and it's a nice repetitive. Just a nice over lace yes. pattern. Yeah. But I did supersize it because it seems to be my, my thing. So I it's on actually a Ravelry yeah. page yeah. with all with the your modifications. modifications. So yeah. the original one was quite a bit smaller, but I, I went to more. And because I'm a tighter knitter, um, I didn't change needle size. It was sort of at the oh, beginning so when it, I was do starting you think to think it was it probably would have been this is the actual size no it's still the, a little bit smaller okay. but the actual pattern is looser than mine okay but all the details you, you'll see the original pattern mm -hmm. and then you'll see this one so this one was knit with uh with a merino silk lace that uh that i i had bought somewhere randomly before we had opened the store Very so this pretty. is a nice little um uh, little lace weight and you know what's interesting is a lot of our customers come to buy lace weight to knit wedding shawls yeah so we have uh, we have one customer, Debbie, who knit for her bridal party and oh, for herself. Beautiful. So it's yeah. really uh, it's kind of a Did nice she knit thing that to pattern? do. No, she knit okay. other patterns. She knit yeah. a different pattern for every every one of her oh, attendants, nice. which is really nice. Yeah. And then when my friend Debbie got married, I knit mm -hmm. her a lace shawl. So I think it's a, yeah, a, it's nice, a nice thing it's to do. A yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you think that even though they're not lace weight, we should talk about what we're wearing? Yeah, I guess just to, okay. in case so people are interested. So I'm doing the ver uh, wearing the Vertices Unite, which I've talked about many times before, and I've done it in the Enzula Squishy, except I have one color, which is from um, Sweet Georgia, uh, the Merino Silk Fine. Yeah. So it's fingering weight yarn so it just goes to show you you can mix and match fingering weight yarns so I, and I just realized of course we look very, look we, very look we look the same and these both are actually Stephen West patterns yes. so this is the exploration station which was one of his mystery knit alongs mm -hmm. a couple of years well, two ago years ago two, I two, think two, three, right yeah. so um, I did mine all in uh, Tosh Madeline Tosh Marina light mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so all of the details the colors are on the on, all, on, on our project pages yes. for these ones right right so we're pretty good for yeah, that so so FYI. <laughs> well, thanks so much for tuning in to our clean day. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to, to the many next one. more. To we'll the next see you next one. time. Great. Thanks so okay. much. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye.